So, you want to shoot video with your phone, either for use on your own social media accounts or to send over to Illinois State University to include it in a bigger project. Well, these tips apply to all cameras, but they'll be extra helpful when you're using a phone. We'll start with the visual side. Rule number one, no vertical video. It may be acceptable on social media, but it won't look good if you're including this footage in another project that's got things horizontal. Rule number two, keep it steady. Unless you're cutting together a fight scene from a spy movie, you don't want your camera moving. There are many options for cheap, tiny tripods that clamp onto your phone and let you set up the shot exactly the way you need it. And if you can't get your hands on one of those, set the camera on a shelf. And if you really must have the camera handheld, tuck in your elbows and keep the camera as close to your body as possible to absorb any motion that might come from your hands and arms. Rule number three, pay attention to your light source. Two things to look for here, color and shadows. The most important thing to remember is that sunlight and light bulbs have different colors. If you're sitting near a window and next to a lamp, you may have conflicting colors on your skin that the camera won't know how to process. You may end up looking purple. Best to stick to one or the other. And the other thing to pay attention to is shadows. Most small light sources give off harsh, unflattering shadows. Note how standing under a can light can give you these nifty raccoon shadows under your eyes. Or how direct sunlight can make you squint and leave you with unflattering nose shadows. Soft shadows come from large light sources, like this huge ceiling light in Huffy Hall on Illinois State's campus. Or next to a large window, with indirect sunlight pouring into the room. Or heading back outside on an overcast day where the sun is now diffused by the cloud cover, much like a photographer's softbox. And if you really must shoot outside on a sunny day, just a few steps into the shade can make a big difference. So keep that in mind, and make sure not to place your subject in between the camera and the light source. You want the light on their face, not behind them. Rule number four, composition. Rule of thirds is a good starting point. Don't just stick your subject in the center, throw them off to the side a little bit. And pay attention to your background. You may be tempted to just stand against a plain wall, but how boring is that? A few feet in either direction can really change the look and add a lot of production value to your shot. Look at that perspective. Okay, so to recap. Horizontal, steady, soft light source, and a decent background. Got it? Let's move on to audio. This is by far the most important part of the equation because an audience isn't going to sit through a video that they can't hear. Rule number one for audio is the most important. Choose your spot wisely. Avoid shooting your video near something that can overpower your voice. Like loud appliances. Or next to traffic. Pick a good quiet spot away from all that. You may even have to politely ask your friends and coworkers to keep quiet for a little bit. But that's okay. Bring in donuts tomorrow and make it up to them. Rule number two, keep the microphone close to the subject. Since the microphone and camera are both built into the phone, that means stay close to your subject. If you stand way across the room because you want to show off the space, not only are your viewers less likely to connect with the speaker because they're far away, but the mic isn't going to pick them up well. Rule number three, speak up. Being close helps, but you still need to project. Hey, I'm talking really quiet because I'm insecure about what I'm saying and I'm a little nervous to be out here on my own. And it's really loud out here and this audio is not going to sound very good. So to recap, pick a quiet spot, set up close to your subject, and have them speak up. Hey, it looks like we got time for a bonus round. I'll make it fast. Bonus number one, if you're going to be using an editing software or handing off the footage for Illinois State to edit, grab some B-roll, which just means any other footage aside from the interview. The sound isn't as important for these, so you can focus on the visuals. Grab some wide establishing shots, some closer detail shots, and now you have the opportunity to add some camera movement, like panning or tilting. And here's your chance for some weird, unique shots. Phones can fit anywhere, so go nuts. Bonus number two, external mic or recorder. If you're worried about your audio and you can't find a quiet spot to shoot, try using a separate device to record audio. That way you can get it as close to the subject's mouth as possible. Maybe you have access to a field recorder like this Zoom H4n, or maybe you just have another phone nearby. Either way, use that instead. You can hold it like a microphone just out of frame and match it up later. Just make sure you give a nice loud clap at the start of the interview to have something to match up. If you don't have a cool slate like this one, hands will do the trick. Bonus number three, manual control. If you don't know what ISO, aperture, or shutter speed are, better leave the camera on auto. But if you know how to control these advanced settings on your camera, do it. And at the very least, most phones will let you lock in your focus by tapping on the screen and holding it down. That's a good way to make sure that your subject will stay in focus the whole time. Well, you're basically a qualified cinematographer now, so get out there and shoot some awesome videos.